Hi, I'm Robin Marie Smith, and welcome to the Documented Life Project, The Unplanner. I'm one of the featured artists for the month of September. I just wanted to say hello and welcome you to my tutorial for the challenge for September for the pocket art card. The theme is stitching, and I decided to do something a little bit different. Instead of one card, I decided to use three cards to create a triple or a triple book, a triplet book that's been stitched together. And I collaged it and I layered it and added some stamping and a bunch of other things. So I've gone through the tutorial step by step. I've done the best I can to um, offer uh, the supplies and tell you what I've used. And I also, well, I talk through the process. <laughs> I hear from my students a lot that they enjoy sort of hearing my thinking. And since I talk out loud while I work often, I left all that in so that you can really kind of hear uh, what I'm thinking or what's going through my mind as I'm trying to decide what to do. So I hope that you enjoy it and you find it inspiring. And even if you don't uh, do documented life or do a planner, this little booklet, this little idea, the techniques you can use for anything or just the little idea you could use um, as a card, just something that you could make and give as a gift. I actually used it for um, the day of my anniversary. So uh, I plan to add some photos to it later, but I, my anniversary just took place, so I don't have the photos developed yet, but I'm gonna add some pictures into it, I think, as well. But anyway, you'll see how it turns out and what I decided to do with it. If you don't already subscribe to my um, list, I uh, send out exclusive content to my subscribers, and I also have a resource library. And in the resource library, there is all kinds of different content and I'll be continually adding to that. And so you'll have access to that as a subscriber and I send out exclusive content through email. You'll get early notifications about workshops and so forth. So anyway, pop on over to my blog and sign up for that. And um, anyway, just wanted to welcome you and um, thanks for being here. And I'm glad you're joining me in my studio for this lesson. Have fun. And it's been great saying hello and seeing you. Thank you so much, and uh, I look forward to spending some time with you in my studio. I'm going to use three cards instead of just one for this challenge. I think I'm going to do a little, uh, a triple, kind of a folded little triple thing. So I think the first thing I'm going to do, rather than working on all the cards individually, I'm going to work on them as one unit. Um, I've got some scraps, uh, papers, uh, text paper, some catalog paper, some photocopies of my own work, and I'll be using those as well. But let's just start with uh, getting the card ready, the cards ready. I'm gonna use some masking tape, and I'm gonna attach the cards with the masking tape. I'm gonna attach them to where half the card has half the tape, and then I'm gonna flip it over, and you can see I left some space and then the next card will be joined as well. And I'm just gonna attach it just to where it will fold, just like that. All right, and then let's do the third card. Same way, just adding half the tape to one card and the other half to the other card. So they line up. Okay, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of tape on this side as well. And this will hold them in place. So now we have um, the three cards uh, connected together. This one's a little off. It's not quite straight. That's okay. All right, so that's the first step in connecting the cards. And basically what I'm creating here, you can either do it like this. I'm kind of liking this sort of triple way of it closing and opening like that. I've pulled some pages out of a catalog. It's uh, actually an anthropology catalog. And I'm just gonna use the parts that have the text. Because now what I wanna do is I wanna cover um, each of the cards with some text. You can use old books, you can use magazines, anything that you wanna use that has text on it is fine. So I'm just gonna, and these cards are small, so it's nice that I don't have to have these huge pieces of text, but 
cut out the text and I'm going to use a glue stick to adhere the text portions uh, to the front and back of my card. Well, I'm going to say my card because now my card is a big card, but all three cards. You could do this separate and then attach your cards later, but I think this will be a little easier to work on it like this. So I'm going to use a glue stick. I'm going to use Dina Wakely's um, media brand white gesso and a palette knife. The next step is to apply gesso to the front and back of our card. Take a piece of sandpaper. Um, it can be not a, it, it just medium grit. I don't even know what grit this is. Usually it says on the back, but just some, not super, um, more like a smaller grit. And you're gonna lightly use the sandpaper to just lightly go over the gesso. Some of it will scratch off, and that's good. Next, we're gonna choose some colors. I'm gonna work with, I think, mm, I'm gonna start with these colors. Let's start with the green. This is um, Deco Art Green Gold Fluid Acrylic. And you can put a little bit on your deli paper, your work surface, whatever works for you. I'm just Now I'm just gonna run some of this color over. I'm gonna rub it in and then turn it over and do the same on the other side. And then I think I'm gonna use this. This is called Cobalt Teal Hue, and this is also Deco Arts. Same thing. I'm gonna use your fingers if you're comfortable with that, I do that a lot. And we're gonna add some of this teal. And the next color is uh, Derelide Yellow, and this is also Deco Arts.
and I think I'm going to add in another color. This one is Quid Quinadracone Magenta, also Deco Arts. And I'm going to be really, of course, the one I need to be the most careful with is the one I put the most on my paper, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and work this one in. And I love the way this color blends with that um, Daryllide Yellow. It creates this beautiful orange. I just absolutely love. It's really rich. And just pick some colors that you really like and use those. Look at how pretty that blends right there. Ugh, just in love with that color combination. Yeah. Let's put some more on this side. So pretty. And actually, the more I work, the more I kind of like it better. So I'm kind of covering up some of the other colors, which is totally fine. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to grab some raw umber. A little bit of that. This is golden raw umber. And again, just a very little bit of this. This is a, a darker color, so it's kind of an accent color, and I'm going to work that more around the sides. It, when I say accent, I meant like contrast. It, adds, it helps add contrast. You can also use Payne's Gray. You can use black. I actually like all three of those and I use all of them. I think I'm going to fill in some of this area here too. I'm kind of gravitating now that I'm working on it towards that red and the that orange and so I'm covering up some of that green and some of that teal which is fine. Sometimes you get in, you start working and you realize, hmm, I like that better. And I like that. We're going to go back to the sandpaper now. And I'm going to start on the edges of my cards. And basically what I'm looking to do is reveal some of the text. And actually you can go into the card if you want in, our, in certain areas. But basically what we're doing is we're scratching in to reveal some of that text that's hidden underneath it. I'm using Golden's Titanium White. This is a thicker uh, white paint, um, more of a heavy body than the fluid. Now I'm going to go in and add some white, which is going to help really kind of unify and balance things a little bit because it's all color and I really want to have something more than just the color. I oftentimes will go back and forth between white and dark and if I have a spot here that I'm not happy with I can just use a baby wipe to kind of this uh, paint does dry kind of fast so this way I can work in some white without having to worry about it drying so quickly. Mm -hmm. 
And while that's drying, I'm looking at papers from my stash. Um, photocopies of my own work. Um, I like to photocopy and print out stuff that I've made and reuse. Um, this is a tag that I made, a black tag with a flower. I made a smaller version of it and cut that out, so I might use that. Um, I have some under paper I might end up using, I'm not sure. Some anthro catalog images. This really plays off nicely with this. I might use it. And then some text paper. So I think, I'm not sure where this is going, but while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to pull out some stamps and do some stamping. I like this heart. This is from the Dream Thicket stamp sheet by um, Kristen Peterson, and it's available at Paper Bag Studios. I really thought this would be a kind of a pretty addition to the book. So I'm just gonna stamp a few of those and I'm gonna cut them out. Again, I like to I like to stamp onto uh, text paper and then use the tech, you know, use the cutout piece as you know, I do that as well as stamping directly on the work, but sometimes I I don't want it to get lost on the, what I'm working on. So this way I can I can cut it out and then have the piece that I want to use. I also like this stamp. It doesn't really have a name. It's also from that same, same stamp sheet, Dream Thicket. But I love these circles that are on it, these open circles. So let's stamp that. I'm not sure where that will go, but I'm just going to cut it out and see what happens. I'm going to start with this Stencil Girl stencil. I believe this is called Mimosa. I'm going to use white, the same white, Golden's Titanium. And let's just start putting some more layers on this. I'm not sure where it's going. I actually have no plan. Sometimes I, I have an idea of what I want to do, but then other times, not a clue. And right now I have no idea. So I'm just going to go in here and Put some of these shapes in here and see what happens. It's starting to look a little bit more layered when you start adding stencils in. Now I'm going to go in and start adding some paper. And I really don't have a plan, <laughs> as you can probably see. I have no idea. I'm just I'm just going to glue some down and see what happens. I think right now as I'm looking at this, so that you can understand my thought process, there's too much pinkish, greenish, or not pink, uh, greenish, there's too much of this pinkish red color. And I, it's bugging me. So <laughs> I go in now at this point and say, all right, what does it need to calm that down? So I'm going to go into one of these um, pieces of, uh, one of these photocopies of a collage that I've already done. And I'm going to tear out a portion of this. And this portion here, it's a lot lighter and it has some black in it. So there's some contrast there. So that's, uh, that's what I think it needs at this point. So I'm going to go in and you're probably thinking, oh, why are you covering up your layers? Well, you know, you just reach a point where you just have to start adding more to it. And what I was thinking I wanted to do just wasn't jiving. I didn't, wasn't feeling it. So let's, I think right here, let's put that on this side. I'm a firm believer in leveraging your work. Um, and if you've taken any workshops with me, you know that I preach it a lot. Always make copies and reuse. Now see it's starting to look much better now, at least from my perspective. So I'll continue to go through and look at different papers that I have, and I will either tear or trim or whatever to get some contrast is what I'm going for now. I could, I could certainly use paint. I don't have to come in and use uh, paper, but 
I already have these already made, so I might as well use them, and I really like them. So maybe this one goes on the inside. You know what? Let's just not think about it. Let's just put it down. Let's just put it down. I'm not used to working on such a small surface. I want to be a little bit careful, though. It still folds. It might... Uh, it might bend the paper a little, but I'm gonna stitch it because that um, is part of our part of our theme. Now I really like this little section here, so let's let's take this too. So as I'm working and I find things oh, I'm not too crazy about, I'm still maintaining my background. I'm still maintaining what I really like about this, but I'm adding in more. And by adding in things from something you've already made, it looks a lot more rich and detailed because, well, it was something you already made and you layered and you painted and I think that looks great. I really like that and it coordinates with this. Let's put that down too. I'm never afraid to cover things up, uh, not get too attached to something just because it might look good. You know, right now I'm covering up some stencils, but see, you can still see some of that poking out. And yeah, love that because it's given some contrast. So let's do this. Let's take the, let's take this stamp. Not sure yet what I'm going to do with it. I think, I think I'm going to cut it. I still have the hearts. I think this is going to be the outside of my book, of my little, my card book thing. And again, I'm going to be stitching this so some of these little lifting and the bubbles will come off. Yeah, this is, see this, now we're looking at it from its small perspective because this is what it's going to actually do. And then open, and then it's going to have this side. And I'll be stitching this down. I really, really like this. That's my favorite part. Too bad I can't make that my cover because I really like that. But okay, so let's see. I was thinking, what if, what if we cut these and we made them into squares? What if we did that? Kind of digging that, or maybe the heart is what goes on the cover. I think so. All right, so let's set that aside. We're gonna definitely put the heart on the cover. And then I still think we should carry this through. And here's an idea, it just came to me. Okay, so let's date this. I think I know what I'm gonna do. Each one of these are gonna become the little marker on the page. And I think we could write uh, morning, noon, and night. Morning, noon, and night. And then we journal and write on the card what we did. So let's put just a hint of white paint in there just to make it a little easier to write on. And then I can glue them down. I am definitely winging this, so, so far I think I like it. All right, let's do that. These little cards are so small, but I'm thinking I can absolutely make this happen. I think I'm gonna put this one up here. Now keep in mind where it folds. I still haven't even stitched on this. Okay, and I don't want these all to be the same. And it's starting to come to me now that I have an idea. And as I keep working, let's put this one over here. And then the last one, we'll put it up here. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is, I think I need to go in and do some marks on this. I'm just gonna grab some pencils, some pens. I've got, this is, I absolutely love this um, 
grit pencil from um, Faber-Castell. I've got some charcoal pencils and my Stabilo. Primo charcoal pencil, love that one. All right, so I'm gonna use these and see what happens. Using all three of my pencils, I just went in and scribbled on it and made marks on it. I'm gonna stop there for now and then we'll, we'll figure it out. So let's go back to the front, which is gonna be this side here, and I'm gonna add that heart because I really think the heart's gonna be the perfect addition to the front. And I think, I think I'm gonna put it right up here in the corner. Yeah, let's put it, let's put it right there. Okay, I might still come back and do something with that, but I like the heart up there in the corner. Let's use a brush and let's use some fluid white. This is titanium white from Deco Arts. I'm going to use um, Simply Simon number two. I really like the, the tip of this brush. And I'm just going to move this in here. You can see what I'm doing. Just a piece of deli paper and my card. And let's go in and add, let's just add some little lines, dots, whatever you want to call it, right in here. And that actually helps to unify parts of this. And maybe over here we'll do the same thing. This way we'll bring in a little color into this, or a little bit of contrast even on this black part right here. And it's okay if it goes over those little squares. I like that. And maybe even right in here. Let's just go along the bottom of this. All right, so I'm just looking at it right now to see what else I want to do. Um, I think I think I want to go around, I think I'm going to go around the heart with my Stabilo and then use that brush again, only this time it has a little bit of water on it, just to make that stand out a little bit more. So maybe, and of course it's such a tiny little spot that I want to put this in, so. Yeah, I think that's what I'm looking for. Maybe I'm going to go a little bit higher on that so I don't lose the, the little white dots. Now I'm just going to use a regular ballpoint pen. There's nothing fancy about this ballpoint pen. And I'm just going to do some with my non-dominant hand, so they're really messy. I'm just going to draw some circles to kind of bring all that together. I think I might even pen in some circles there. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, let's just take this little piece right here. Why not? Try not to think too much about it. Yeah, let's put that one right there. Also, uh, we'll do this later, but I was thinking we could also add in a little bit more masking tape to it too, which would be kind of nice. Okay, I think now it's time to take it to the sewing machine and do the stitching, and then um, I'll finish it off. For the stitching, I'm gonna start going around the perimeter of all three cards. I'm using a straight stitch, black thread, and no special needle. I just use a regular all-purpose needle.
I'm going to go around twice with the same straight stitch. Now right here on the ends, I'm going to go in and just do a couple passes of the stitching to get some thread to hang off of it. And so when I pull it, I end up with that extra thread. That's the only reason why I'm doing that. Plus I like the way it looks. There. Now I have fringe on all four corners. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and my plan was to stitch where we have our folds. So I'm going to do that as well. Let's see how that would. Maybe I'll just do it on the cover, but let me see. Yeah, I like it. All right, let's do it on this side. Yeah, I like it. Um, just I'm just gonna do one pass on the stitching, on the uh, where the folds are. All right. Now it's time for some finishing touches. Back on the inside, I had mentioned earlier I was gonna do um, uh, a.m., midday, p.m. for that particular day. So I found these. Uh, I've had them in my stash. So There's like these old. I think I don't know if these are typesetter letters or not. They're actually kind of big, but they're kind of fun and funky, so I think I'm going to use them. I'm using the black dye ink pad, and I'm going to roll with the AM, and I'm going to stamp that on the little square here, or this little circle. These are kind of big, so I'm not sure how they're going to work, but not going for perfect. That looks good. And they're a lot bigger than they look on the stamp, but I think it's okay. Let's go with AM. Now I didn't have the right letters to do noon. So let's do PM first and then I'm going to go in and do uh, the last one. So let's do PM. Perfect. And then I have a number one and a number two. So let's just do like one and two, which is sort of like noon. Well, it is noon. That's what I'm going to do, noon. And there's a little spot on the stamp where sometimes it has a, the rubber doesn't quite, yeah, line up right. Oh, it's kind of hard to see that. That's okay. I can, I can write that one in. I don't know why the one is so much smaller than the two. Ugh, I hate when that happens. All right, so it didn't stamp great, but that's not a problem. Because I'll just go in now with my pen and I'll, I'll just draw it. There. So we have AM, noon, and PM. All right. So I think that looks good. All right. And then, of course, I'll journal on this. And on the other side, I thought it would be kind of fun since we're going to close it like this. And then it will open. I wanted to put some sari ribbon on it. I was trying to think of a way to do that, and I think I figured it out. I'm going to use a tab. This is a um, one of my Art Pop tabs. I think this one's from In the Garden, and I thought this would be. Let me show you what I got in mind. And rather than stitching it on, which we could certainly do, I'm going to put it down at the bottom, mostly because I have my my little number or my PM square up there. So let's just staple it on. And I'm going to use my time. I'm going to use the Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher. I'm going to put a staple on one end and a staple on the other end. I hope I did that right. Then I thought I could put a hole in the middle. 
little hole right here. I probably should have done that before I put it on there, but that's okay. At least now I know exactly where it's going. And let's punch a hole. And now we can put some sari ribbon through that. Now, what I'm going to do, I love this because see now the tab sticks out this side rather than the top or the side, it's over here, which I really like. Plus that little bit of yellow and green complements what's on the front here. I wonder if that's a good compliment. And look at that. We've got that teal right here on this page. All right, let's try that one and see what that one looks like. Oh, it's kind of fat, but let's try it. I'm going to come up from the bottom. And pull those through. And if I don't like the two colors, I can just go back and take one of them out. So it's not, I'm not stuck with it. I mean, that's way too much ribbon for sure, but... Yeah, it's too much, but I like the teal because when we open it, I like it because it's just one more color and it adds contrast. So it's not the same color that's in it, but I want it so, I want it shorter, which normally I like them a little longer, but I think this suits it to be short. Yeah, that looks good. Mm -hmm. All righty, so then we have AM, PM, or AM, noon, PM, and I like it. So I'm going to go ahead and do my journaling on it and I'll show it to you when it's finished. I decided to add a couple more finishing touches to this and I'm going to use um, a colored pencil. Uh, this one is Prismacolor and it's aquamarine and I'm using the Uniball Signo White uh, pen. What I decided was with this teal in the sari ribbon, I think it'll be nice to have a little bit of teal to complement this on the cover. So I'm gonna just take the pencil and I'm not, I'm not really doing much except accenting it. Now I did add the date, so I thought if I go in with the pencil, I can add some of this teal to the cover by simply adding a circle around the date to kind of point point out the date there. It's subtle, but it's there. Um, I could even go in and maybe just add a little bit of scribble there. So that just that little bit with the pencil, you can see, adds in a nice complement to that. Now the other thing I want to do is I want the heart to pop a little bit more. Now on the inside, as I mentioned, I journaled AM, noon, and PM, afternoon. My book, August 19th, is my anniversary. The heart, the date, and then what we did on that day. Now I might come back later and I might add a little photo or maybe, um, maybe I'll write something else on here, but for now, I just really like the way this looks with nothing on it. So that is my little pocket art card. And I hope you enjoy it.